We're continuing our studies in Chapter 21 on transcription and RNA, and the subject of this lesson is transcriptomes and chromatin remodeling. Let's first briefly review from Chapter 3 our overall purpose in transcription. Our goal is to separate the two strands of DNA and use one of them as a guide to synthesize an RNA molecule. The question is which of the two strands is transcribed? RNA synthesis proceeds by complementary base pairing with one of these DNA strands, just as in the case of DNA synthesis. The strand acts as a template to determine which ribonucleotide gets added into the RNA molecule and in what order. In our figure here at the top of the screen, we have the DNA in blue. The bottom will serve as our template. RNA polymerase works much the same way as DNA polymerase in that it will read 3' prime to 5' prime and synthesize 5' prime to 3'. Prime. And so RNA polymerase will read the bottom strand 3' prime to 5' prime, and that sequence, as you can see, is TGTCG. The complement of that, the nucleotides incorporated into our RNA molecule in red, are the reverse complement, ACAGC. This is how RNA polymerase determines which nucleotide to add and in which order in our RNA molecule. This is the messenger or mRNA molecule and it contains the genetic code that will be later translated into a sequence of amino acids. We refer to this DNA strand that guides synthesis of the RNA molecule as our template strand. It's serving as the template to drive synthesis of the mRNA. It can also be referred to as the non-coding strand because it's the reverse complement of that which contains the code that will be translated. The complementary strand of DNA is referred to as the coding strand. Let's compare these. Here's our RNA molecule in red. On the top we have the DNA coding strand. Let's compare that sequence. The RNA molecule begins ACAGCU. If we compare that with the DNA strand ACAGCT, we see they're identical except we have T's in places of U's. So if the code is in the RNA, it's reasonable to, be ca to call the identical DNA strand the coding strand. So here we have in the DNA the template strand that drives RNA synthesis and the coding strand that is identical to the sequence that we'll find in that mRNA molecule. The processes of replication and transcription, although both occur in the nucleus, are spatially separate and that's in, as a part of our figure here. The DNA and RNA have been labeled with fluorescent tags. The DNA is in green and the RNA is in red. So on the far left we have our DNA stained green indicating the distinct locations for DNA replication within the nucleus. In the center we have our RNA stained red and therefore we can see distinct locations within the nucleus where transcription occurs. It's not until we merge these two images on the far right that we can see that the red and the green do not overlap in every case. This tells us that replication and transcription do not occur necessarily at the same time and certainly not in the same location. The transcriptome or the machinery of transcription is likely immobile just as we saw in the case of DNA synthesis. Otherwise the RNA would tend to get tangled with the DNA as the machinery tried to rotate around the DNA helix. In the process of transcription we need first of all a place to start, a place to begin on that DNA molecule. We need to separate the two strands of DNA or melt the DNA. We need a way to begin RNA synthesis and then we need to continue to extend that transcript until we reach some stopping point and so we need a signal of where to stop. As we'll see a little bit later, the RNA molecule actually becomes modified even before we finish synthesizing it. Recall that our DNA is wrapped around a histone complex in the form of nucleosomes to form our chromatin. And so if we want to 
separate the two strands of DNA, we need to dissociate it from that histone complex. And for that reason, we need to remodel the chromatin. One of the most common ways is to modify the binding of the DNA to the histones. So we can add and remove groups to these histone proteins and therefore either strengthen the interaction with the DNA or loosen it for the purpose of separating the DNA for transcription. Commonly we might add and remove methyl groups, acetyl groups, or phosphoryl groups. Here's a table from your book illustrating some of the changes that might take place. As you can see in some cases the histones are methylated and that silences the chromatin. In other words, no transcription is occurring. In other cases it might be methylated and that will turn it into transcriptionally active chromatin. So there's no set rule. We simply add and remove groups and that will either strengthen or loosen the interaction of the histones with the DNA and that's important in the process of transcription. You do not need to know these details. One common way is acetylation. It's catalyzed by histone acetyl transferases or HATs and typically that acetyl group is donated from acetyl-CoA and added to a lysine side chain as illustrated here. Of course if we have enzymes to add the groups then we need an enzyme to remove the group. In this case a histone deacetylase. There are also more general chromatin remodeling proteins and as we see illustrated on the bottom right the chromatin remodeling complex bound to a nucleosome in yellow. On the left we have the open complex, on the right the closed complex. As you can see there's a conformational change in the proteins as it associates with the nucleosome. This serves to loosen the DNA from the nucleosome so that we can transcribe the DNA. And the illustration of this is on the far left here. In other words, we don't completely unspool the DNA from the nucleosome. Instead, we loosen its interaction, transcribe a segment, and then retighten that interaction. So we transcribe the DNA in segments, and the nucleosome appears to slide along the DNA rather than completely dissociating. In the next video lesson, we'll look at some of the components in the DNA that are recognized by the enzyme RNA polymerase, and we'll see if there are any other DNA elements involved.